Welcome to the stream. Three streams this week. Second day in a row. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you again to the amazing Ryan Davis. Um, his music is so good. I'm just like flicking through the first five minutes of every stream and wow. Um, yeah, really enjoying it. Um, amazing composer. If you ever need any, any music composed, any custom music composed, I can heartily recommend Ryan. Anyway, so today we're going to take a small, quick half break from Tweet Your Quest. I really, really, really need to learn about Authy and how it works and what it is and what it does. Well, I know what it is and what it does. Um, Authy's um, Twilio's two-factor authentication app. And I, 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 I've got like the thoughts of a talk that I'd like to start submitting to conferences in my mind. But really, I need to like at least fire it up and understand the basics before I um, whack out an outline. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be working on today. I decided to use Laravel as the auth layer just because it already comes with a really super simple, easy to use auth layer. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and add authy to Laravel's authentication today. I don't know how far we're going to get. Like I literally have nothing done here. Um, there's only two things that I've done to prep this. So I've set up my authy app. I've enabled two-factor authentication on my Authy dashboard and connected my Twilio account because it uses your Twilio account. So this, literally all I've done is create an Authy account. I just wanted to check that everything was um, happy days, uh, ready for me to go. I haven't even installed the Laravel test app or any of that good stuff yet. I've done that in the past, so I guess that hopefully should be kind of straightforward. Um, yeah, so we're going to we're gonna go today. I have no idea how long we're going to go. Um, I guess we're going to go until... I'm so hot that I really just want to go and sit outside a pub and drink cheap cider. Um, that's the plan. Mm. Mm -mm. Iced water. Wow. So, yeah, I guess the first thing, should we create our app? Now, let's get our Laravel, our basic Laravel um, app up and running. I can never remember. I, like, need to install some kind of global... Um, so I need to... Install some kind of global thingy. I can never remember how to get going with Laravel. Um, yeah, it, it is a good plan. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, AJT. Welcome to the stream, CL Dub. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. To see you, nice. So, yeah, I, I know. Like Laravel's a really good fit to try and like bolt Authy in. Um, so, yeah, I guess we can just install the installer and then create the application. That sounds good to me. So let's compose, Composer install the Laravel installer. I don't think I have it installed. Maybe I did. Um, this is a new laptop that I've only had a few, like a month or so, however long I've been working for Twilio now. I can't even remember. But yeah, this Laravel installer should allow me to do Laravel. La, Lara. Oh, I need to like add it to my, yeah. I need to add it to my home directory, don't I? Uh, oh, I could just do this, right? Because I don't need that at this point. So, uh, dot .composer bin Laravel. No, oh, let's take a look here. Vendor bin Laravel. Yeah, there we go. New. And let's call this Authy. So, we're just firing up a brand new Laravel application here. Oh, Dragonman Tank's got a package. This dependent in... Uh, in all, you know, a good friend of mine, the guy I used to a podcast with, um, Jerkstock Games, one of my favorite people to speak to. He's actually, ironically, he's starting work at Nexmo on Monday. So congratulations to you, Chris. Um, happy for you, my friend. Happy for you. So, yeah, we're pulling in all over the Laravel. Uh, oh, we should probably uh, let you see my screen, right? But it's only pulling in some uh, some Laravel dependencies here. So it's not exactly doing anything magical at the moment. We're pulling it all in. So I haven't got many conferences coming up at the moment. I kind of stopped submitting for a while. Over a year, I stopped submitting to events to just to take a break. And then, of course, I got this job as a, a dev devangel, as we call him, developer evangelist. And uh, so I'm kind of backlogging. But I will be at Serverless Days London uh, the week after next. I think it's the week after next. The 9th. Yeah, that's a week. A uh, week Thursday. Um, and I hopefully this will serverless days 
London. Let's take a look while we install there. So yeah, I'm going to be at Serverless Days. I'm really looking forward to it. We're sponsoring. We're going to have a booth. So come and hang out if you're going to be there. Come and say hello if you're watching the stream. I'd love to hear from you. I might take some special swag for people who watch the stream. My good friend CL Deb, who I work with, has done that in the past and says that it, it can work well. So maybe I'll take some extra special swag if you come up and mention that you, you watch the stream. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So that's the, yeah, the 11th of July. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So there we go. There's our Laravel installed. So if we see the Authy, we've got our Authy app now. Now, I believe Laravel ships with its own um, development server, right? Yeah, PHP Artisan serve. So we could just use like PHP dash S, blah, 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 blah. But Laravel just... Um, allows us to do that using so artisan is laravel's command line runner um that that's like kind of not you know the basics here but we'll cover it anyway so we can run out of artisan and then serve and that should serve our server no serve that should serve our local deployment server on one two eight dot not one brilliant so this um there's our development now we might as well get ngrok up and running right so you good folks who are watching can can check things and hit my server. So I say this every single stream. Like I should get some kind of pre-made video or something where I can just whack it and it'll say say it for me. But uh, Ngrok, all Ngrok does is it allows the internet to access your local development server. So at the moment, the only people who can access this development server that I'm running are the people on my local network, right? All Ngrok does is ma magically makes that available to the world. It's super cool. So we can say, Ngrok, please proxy uh, HTTP, and I believe it was 8081, uh, 8000, sorry. So proxy port 8000 to the world. That's all you need to do normally, but I own a subdomain so I can have a predictable, um, subdomain because normally it'll just stick some random numbers and characters in there so i can just say oh hello oh dash dash subdomain so i can just say yeah use my subdomain that we can use so if anyone goes to g g h g w h dot ngrok that i own now you should see my laravel to do page that i just spun up so there's that i wonder if anyone's actually looking i can actually uh inspect the um proxy as well which is kind of nice so no nobody's looking that's okay i'm looking that's all accounts so we have laravel the next thing we need to do is to enable laravel's authentication and there should be an artisan command that just does this for us it just like bang on it comes hey Felix, i believe you you've been in all three of my streams this week now so thank you very much i'll send you a t-shirt you win a t-shirt for being in uh, all three of my streams this week that's all good so we just want the uh, authentication turned on yeah and we can just do this php artisan make off that should just turn on the authentication now the question i have here is that we need a database installed right for this to run we need a database installed and configured it'll take a pint of cola or an next meet instead of the t-shirt okay that's easy i mean knock it off the uh, the number of beers you owe me then so we're all good there um, I think we need a database up and running, right? Before I can do anything else. Um, so, I guess... Oh, did somebody... No. I guess we need to install a database. Or do we use something like Vagrant? Or do we use something like Docker? Or do we just install a database locally? Like, do I have a database installed locally? No. Okay. Let's just install a database and then talk nonsense while it installs. Um, so I just want to like literally just install a database. So then we should probably open our Laravel um, project in our IDE as well, which would probably be useful. So in www, we've got Authy. And in a new window, please. Thank you very much. And let's view this in presentation mode so you can see what's going on as well. So then I know that we're going to have to update this M file, right? Because this M file is going to have stuff like how do we access our ngrok.io? How do we access our application? Um, we just fix some madness in the homestead. Yeah, beautiful. Sh should we use homestead, you think, uh, Felix? I don't know if I have um, Docker file detection. Does it have a Docker file? 
no. I don't know if I have even have homebrew installed. Uh, not homebrew. VirtualBox installed. Do I have VirtualBox installed? Because I need VirtualBox, right? Firstly. Whereas now I've just got MySQL working anyway. So let's start MySQL. Because I should just be able to use this locally for the sake of this, shouldn't I? There shouldn't be any... Yeah, it uses VirtualBox, and I don't think I I have... I, like, I would totally prefer to use Vagrant and um, Homestead. Homestead's an amazing way to spin up a, a quick developer environment. Like, massive kudos to uh, Joe Ferguson, who maintains that. It is a superb way to to maintain... A, to, to quickly spin up a dev environment for Laravel or any PHP um, application, to be perfectly honest. It's not stuck with Laravel. It's just like a Laravel product. Homestead's amazing. But we've got this working. We've got a database running now. I'm guessing our password is root. Um, with no password, which is fine for this. MySQL minus U root. This is taking a while though. MySQL's configured only allow local allow connections from local host by default. So there's that, right? Cannot connect to local MySQL server. Didn't I just start it? This is we may be going with Vagrant after all if I can't get my SQL working because this should just connect, right? This should just connect. I don't care about securing it because it can only be connected locally and we're just... Um, we're literally just blagging this, but it should be running, right? So we did brew services start my SQL. It started my SQL, which looks good. I'm on a Mac, yeah. I'm on a Mac. I'm using a Mac. Uh, but this should work. Hmm. So, brew services um, stop MySQL. So this should work. Brew should, should sort this for me. If this doesn't work, we'll just go with Vagrant straight away because I'm not going to spend half the stream just hacking around trying to get MySQL working, right? Although I would expect this to, to work. Tell you what, I, I tell you what I'll I'll do if this doesn't work. Is we'll um we'll take a look at Launch Rocket, which is superb for managing your stuff that you've installed by via homebrew. This is super good. Have I got that on Launch Rocket? No. I've got Hearthstone Beta Launcher. Uh Launch Rocket Mac. This pref pane allows you to start and stop your. Um, it allows you to start and stop your, the things that you've installed via Homebrew using like a, a pref pane plugin, which is superb. I'll show you now. Um, yeah, it's not dangerous. It's fine. Keep. What's the worst that can happen now? Eh? So if we run this pref pane, and I have to enable the developer to allow the pref pane to run, right? Uh, open anyway. Open. Okay. So now we can scan Homebrew. And it should find everything we've installed via Homebrew. It looks like it's running, but the SOC file can't be located. That's quite possibly the case. So it's not. So you can see I've got two things that I've installed via Homebrew that we can start my PHP and MySQL. So I can just click start. Now this should give me a better. Um, oh, now we're talking. TCP. Try through TCP. Okay. MySQL. My, yep. I'm I'm totally up for that. Welcome to the stream, Fatten. Oh, have we seen you before? I can't remember. MySQL minus H. G oh, yeah, that's not going to work. Caps lock is... Is it on? Is it off? Let's try that again with now with added lowercase. MySQL minus H one two seven dot one dot one minus username root. Yes, please. That looks better than it did before. Thank you very much. Although it's still not getting anywhere. It's in. It's in. Thank you. Thank you, Fadden. I owe you a beer. If you ever meet me in a conference, you can cash that beer in at any time. Just remind me of the MySQL stuff on the stream. That's for sure. Okay, so it is working. That's good. 
Although I do like the uh, the preference pane. I do like this preference pane thing. Launch rocket. Anyway, so we now need to configure my SQL, right? In our env. So I can never remember if we need to just edit this env or if we should copy env.example, but it's fine. We'll just edit this env. App debug, the key doesn't matter at this point. App name, authy, sample. The env is local. MySQL, blah, blah. Database. Yeah, Laravel, let's just call that Authy. Database uses root and the password's empty. And I think that's all we need to do in the short term. And then we also need to go back to our database and create, uh, back to MySQL and create that database, right? So I just, this is just getting authentication working with Laravel. This shouldn't be too tricky. We should just be able to do this, enable the authentication and run the migrations and we should be good to go. So create database Authy. Done. Good. Oh, I don't know why I exited. I'll probably need that again. So in my mind now, we have a database working, right? And we... Whoa. Sorry. Didn't mean to do that. And in database here, we don't have any migrations. Oh, we do. We have a users table and a password resets table. Have I already enabled auth? Did I do that already? I can't remember. I didn't think I did. No. Okay, well, we can, we can still migrate anyway. So PHP app design... Artisan migrate. Yeah, we probably need to be in the in the right folder before we do that. That's useful. Fail to pass .m file due to unexpected white space. Fail that authy sample. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Should be able to do so via artisan without manual. Can't have space in app name. Oh. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of pretty obvious, right? And more errors. Okay, the server request and authentication method known to the client. Oh, I know what this problem is. I've seen this problem before. Yeah, it's okay. It's it doesn't uh, it doesn't really matter. I've seen this problem before. This is to do with um, this is definitely to do with the version of SQL I'm running locally versus the version of. Um, versus the version of a uh, SQL driver that's being used. I've Googled this before, for sure. And there's a fairly simple result to fix this. Because I'm running version eight of my of uh, SQL Server, I'm almost certain. There's a workaround in the config. Okay, yeah, I, I remember this. I remember doing this only a few weeks ago, actually. So in database.php, under connections, under MySQL, we want to replace it with this good stuff, right? That's what I think we need to do. Nope. Oh, please. Database.php, under connections, under MySQL. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot how I pasted that. Okay, that looks good to me. And then let's try that again. Nope. The server request. Oh, let's let's read let's read the ticket first before I. PHP artisan migrate install. Artisan is already okay. Let's. PHP artisan make auth then, because that enables migrations and everything. Because what I normally do is just PHP artisan make auth and then PHP artisan migrate and everything works. I don't need to actually enable the migrations. This is a problem with um, the authentication method of connecting to, to SQL Server 8 from within artisan. There's no tables in the table. Yeah, but this is not saying that it can't find the tables, right? It's saying the server requested authentication method no, unknown to the client. Okay, I can I can do that, but I'm I'm hundred percent certain I'll get the same error because the server requested an authentication method which is unknown to the client. This is the problem we have here, and I don't know why that didn't fix it. You'll find a workaround for your config there. This should be the workaround for my config, right? Let's take a look. Oh, 
this is so small. Do 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 do. So no auto create user, I think, is what we want, right? For those who are migrating their SQL search, I want to work around. You can set the modes array in your database.php file, which I did. Have I have I cached that database.php file? Do you think? Is there a problem there? Is that why this migrate doesn't actually work? Uh, PHP artisan cache clear. There you go. My my uh, Laravel foo is strong today. That's good. Okay, this is a real problem. The server requests an authentication method unknown to the client, and I seem to have updated artisan config clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. PHP artisan config clear sweet because i know that it does cache the configuration right i am i'm aware that that happens although i don't think it does when you have your um m set to be local i don't think it caches that stuff when your app m is set to be local i think it doesn't actually config config cache these files so what have we done wrong here then so this looks good to me Driver is MySQL, and we're using the MySQL driver in DB Connection MySQL. Yep, that looks fine. The DB Connection is MySQL. The host, the port, the database, root, password. There's a connection issue here, though, isn't there? Definitely. Okay, let's take a look if there's any more results from our friend in Google. See if there's any better, uh, any other way that we can fix it. For me, actually running out of commands inside the workspace container. Oh, okay. It may be that we just use um, Homestead here now, after all. Because, obviously, there's going to be a problem and we're going to be... Try creating a new, different user. I, I've seen this before, to be honest, Felix. And it's not a user problem. It's an authentication method problem, which is to do with the defaults of um of the default authentication method that sql server 8 uses as opposed to sql server 7 this works flawlessly with sql server 7 um i mean we could do that if you think it'll help but i'm not convinced that it will but you know i'm all for it i just trying to remember how i i can't remember if i needed to edit this configuration or not and that's the other thing I'm trying to remember. Sorry, this configuration. Let's do a quick more, one more quick Google to see if. Oh, Matthias, hi. Here's the fix. You can create a user with the old authentication mechanism. Yeah, that that should work. Okay, so let's do what you said, but with the old authentication mechanism. Okay, cool. That looks like that looks sensible. Create a user with the old authentication mechanism, which MySQL database driver for PHP still expects. So we create a new user, yeah. And then we alt the user and we give it a password and then we can use that. So you were 50% correct, Felix, which is not a bad amount of connect to be. I mean, we should be doing that anyway, right? So... Oh, I did create it with ODSCI as well. Never mind. Never mind. We our user's now called ODSCI. That's fine. And our password's ODS secret. That's also fine. Um, yeah, laziness for the win, right? So the username is OD ODSCI. Let's try that and let's see if that works. So. No. Hmm. Access denied for user ODSCI to local host. So it's not, it's actually, um, yeah, config clear. On config clear, do you think? Because it is using the new username. It just doesn't have access to the authy database, right? That's the problem here. It's telling us exactly what the problem is. That's, that's great. So, yeah, it's because look what I did. I granted it to a non existent database. I granted all privileges onto a database that we didn't even care about. 
I want to grant the privileges on to the authy. Whoa, hello. To the authy table. You are not allowed to create a user with Brant. Grant. Huh? Oh. Yeah. 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 I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm officially an idiot. Ah. I changed the wrong thing. Yeah, second part's the user, the first part's the table, right? There you go. We get in there. I mean, I was hoping we'd actually be into the fun and games of it at this point, but hey, there we go. Finally, finally. Okay, now if we go back to our Laravel app, we should see login and register up here. Perfect. So if we log in, uh, if we register, we'll register as ghawkin authy at twilio.com oh no that's my email address the password okay we'll just use the suggested password that's fine and we get a whoops but at least we've got a whoops which is um which is from laravel rather than anything else the, the server requested authentication method unknown to the client no no why are you using the same problem? Why? It's the same error. It's the same error. Oh. Okay. Check the environment, var environment variables. Environment variables empty. Yeah. <laughs> this is the problem, I guess. Should be picking those up from the M file, right? Let's take a look at the code here. So... It should be picking this up. If it's picking this up for PHP Artisan, it should also be picking this up for um, HTTP, right? When we, when we do a, when we do a request response, that's a very good idea, actually, Felix. Uh, flush the, flush the configs, yeah. And the cache, that's a very good suggestion, because I I know that the configs don't need flushing when you're using Artisan, but they may well be, uh, need to be flushed when you're. When you're running, no. Oh, I thought it worked then, and then it didn't. When you're actually running the HTTP stuff, hmm. This is strange, you know. This is very strange. So what I want to do now is to debug this, right? I guess we could. We have X debug enabled. That's good. So we should be able to debug this relatively easily. Um, I don't know where to start though i guess we start with the stack trace and we figure out from there what what the heck's going on the server request authentication right that's fine so let's take a look at the stack trace so we go we the kernel then we root and then we start set up the pipeline and then we root through the pipeline and then we run check for maintenance mode which is a middleware and then we finish routing I'm just trying to figure out where it pulls the database configuration from. So let's find out where it pulls the database config from. Session start. Because it should use some, at some point create a new database object, right? That it uses to connect. So it's still routing at this point. Ah, there we go. There we go. Before the routing. I don't think so but I mean we could just dump it in count anyway right it's calling count first is it successfully running all these illuminated with connectors MySQL here we go this will do this will do line 182 of MySQL connector That should, oh, okay. That should be right. MySQL connector, database connectors, oh, connection factory, sorry. Looking at the wrong place. Connection factory, line 182. Okay, cool. So at this point, let's just, yeah, I want to edit this file anyway. Leroy Jenkins. Let's do old school. 
So hopefully now we should be able to just like see what the config is at least. Okay. So yeah, my my suspicions are correct in that it's using the wrong configuration here. It's using the Laravel database and it's trying to use root and an empty password. So it's not picking. It's using a different configuration in the web front end than it is in the actual uh, command line because Artisan's working great. So we definitely have a problem here. Um, I guess our friend Google can help. Um, if nobody in chat knows how to to do this, then Laravel using different different database. No, different config HTTP than Artisan. That's never going to return anything good, right? What do you think? That's never going to help. Is it using the example config? Oh, it does the ex does the example config uh, overwrite the the env the normal? Does the example env overwrite the normal dot env? I thought the example was just there to show you what it what needs to be set rather than used. I mean, it very well could be because this is using this stuff. Check the public folder. Yeah, I'm not sure. Export some M files in the No, I mean it looks like it is. It's getting it from somewhere, right? So yeah, let's get rid of M for example, and let's clear our caches again. I really need to make a make command to do that, and let's try again. That's fine. Um, that sounds. Yeah, it's not doing that. You're right. It's not pulling them from there. What was the other suggestion? Sorry, uh, I don't have any M files. Do you think that it isn't picking them up from here? I tell you what else it could be picking them up from is the database file itself because this comes with oh no this uses forge as the default weird yeah i knew this had this database file had defaults but this database file the defaults are forge and forge weird export some mvas in your local bash profile what is that what would that prove Felix? i'm totally up for suggestions but i don't really get what that proves isn't that didn't we have this problem before in storage cache storage app no storage framework cache no nope, nothing in there that's good oh sorry cook racing you're the same color you Wrap your app URL with quotes. Okay, I can do that. Here, you mean? Can you look for config in database.php? Of course I can. Uh, default DB connection is MySQL. That's fine. This not using the default, though. If it was using the default, it would say forge and forge. Oh, it doesn't have a port, actually. Um, I'm using the ngrok URL. Um, yeah, we wrap it. It's fine. Let's 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 give that a go. I'm totally up for suggestions. This is the fun of the stream, right? Yeah, it's still using root. What are you doing? What are you doing? The name is correct, right? MySQL. The name is MySQL. That's the name there, right? Yeah. <laughs> This is half the problem, right? If we could actually just connect to the database, the rest of this would be easy. <laughs> this isn't the part I expected to struggle with, I'll be perfectly honest, but there you go. Because, I mean, it is definitely connecting. Where on earth is it getting root from? Uh, in the config, right? In scope. The scope we want to look in is... Uh, no, I do have to create a scope first, don't I? Any space values in the env? Do you think that it's not? I mean, let's be honest, right? If if there was if it was a problem with the env file, I would totally expect. Oh, this is now. Of course, it is. This is now var dumping stuff out, right? If there was a problem in the env file, I would totally expect that artisan would throw it away itself. Artisan's picking it up. So for me, the M file must pass, right? That's my, I mean, I to may be totally wrong. I'm just trying to explain my thinking here. My thinking is that this M file 
should pass because otherwise PHP artisan migrate would throw the, throw an error or fall back to um, to the default values if that's how it works. The weirdest thing for me here is that I don't know where this root is being defined, right? The root user and password, I don't know where that's being defined. That's the really odd thing. Because it's not being defined in database, right? There's no root user in there. There's no Laravel. Um, there's no Laravel database name in here. So where is it even getting that from? Hmm. I wonder if it is cached. Like if I have to re cycle the server. That would be really weird, but it, it could be the case. Page expired. Okay, that's fine. Can you check the dot m again? Yeah, of course I can. Anything? It's definitely using the wrong credentials here, right? That's that's definite. So let's register again. Let's register again. Okay. So I had to cycle the artisan serve for some reason. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, you do. Now you tell me, Fatten. Now you tell me. And it is it's obvious like something. Oh now, oh now Felix is coming in. So, you know, you're doing artisan serve. Everyone knows what you got to do after the fact. Everybody knows. Everyone's a winner at the end. Come on. It's all good. Hey, it's working, right? We're logged in. Sweet. So, I guess that's just because it caches the configuration when you do a serve. It must do. How do I, fig how do I find out what it does when it serves? Because I'm now in a position where I'm, like, completely interested to see what artisan serve does where does it actually define the artisan commands i'm really interested to know like artisan service provider in here command.serve well i was expecting you to use like local apache or something okay when have i ever used local apache on this stream i don't think i even have it installed it's fine now that we know it's not a big deal i mean it wasted 37 minutes of my time but that's fine command.serve so this is going to be a serve command i would imagine serve uh classes serve command i'm just interested to see what this actually does now i best go back to work yeah okay you can stay here it's a friday afternoon come on cook racing hang out has anyone mentioned Docker yet? Yeah, you can ban Asgrim anytime you want, Felix. That's totally fine. Actually, don't. He's keeping my numbers up. Ban him near the end of the stream. So let's see what this actually does then. So it... Pass through this server command. How do I figure out what is actually running here? Because it's got to be doing like a PHP-S. <laughs> It's got to be doing a, a PHP-S somewhere, right? has to be. Host port, process escape button, base path, server.php. Oh, it's just running server.php. Server.php. No, it's passing it to server.php. So server.php is actually what's handling it. Okay, it is just passing it to server.php. It's all good. You have a problem. You decide to fix it with Docker. No, you have two problems. That's kind of my um, my experience too. I should really stop getting sidetracked. Okay, so what we were doing was we've got an actual application that works now. Let's go back to actually what we were trying to do. Um, so yeah, thank you to... Oh, I should... I should 100% thank this person afterwards. Um... So, yeah, I'll keep that there so that I can tweet out a link to it later to thank the person. Um, 
so there's we want to use Authy, right? And there's a really weird process flow for Authy in my mind. Um, well, not weird, just you need to kind of know how Authy works. And the way that Authy works is you have to create a you uh you have to create a user in Authy once you've registered it yourself, and then you have to uh, trigger Authy to say to the the client either send a text message or use the Authy app and when they've actually authenticated correctly with the client then it'll send a post as a webhook so this is kind of a weird flow for a php server-side application i guess we're gonna have to put some javascript in there somewhere but we could just like get started the other thing that i really want to do today is to um when you look at Authy's documentation it's not great so my plan today is to where's my back tick don't i have that the documentation isn't great it's not perfectly well written on the authy client so my plan is to make some um changes to this and add a pull request back to the docs at the end of the at the end of the stream as well so i've made a start on doing that um but we need to, to where we see problems with this i'm really open for suggestions on how this can be improved as we work through it so that's all good too so we got our Laravel application. We need to create our Authy app. So I know that we need to do that first. So we create our app, application name, Authy Laravel Stream of Hope. Collaborator, me. I'm all the collaborators, apparently. And that's fine. Uh, you can use this app. You can use this application for one of many Authy integrations okay uh, hmm I don't want to do any of those oh your API key for all three all the Laravel stream of hope this is what we need I guess this is what it's saying you need to put in the env or the API key okay so let's stick that in our m variables first as last what's the PHP storm command to switch to switch um projects i thought it was command back uh, command tilde or command back tick but that doesn't seem to be working anymore that's disappointing so let's go to our env and let's call this our authy api key and then let's uh cycle apache because apparently we're back in the 1990s so we've got our Authy API key, and then what we do is when we register, then we need to hit a, um, then we need to, feel this. Do I need to unmod you? Like you're banning, you're banning the people who are giving me numbers, you know, my, my, come on now. My demographics are, are, are all, are everything. Nah, it's fine. Um, so what we need to do is we need to create a user. So when a new user signs up for our website, we need to hit uh, we need to hit Authy's API and sign that number up to Authy as well. But in, in order to do that, we need to have a phone number and a country code in order to create a new user. So creating a new user with Authy means we need to have a phone number and a country code because you have to have that phone number to do the 2FA. So that's great. So we need to register the user with Authy and then we get an Authy ID back. So I, I am open to, oh, he's not really banned. He's crying. You made him cry. That's great. I'm open to suggestions is the best way to do this. This tutorial -y thing has a suggestion. So it says in the, what file even, can I, can I just see this code sample? Thank you. So this is saying in the user.php, add a new method called update authy ID, first of all, and then add a new auth authy ID property, I guess. This isn't written the best. We probably need to rewrite these documentation at some point as well, but I guess I should know what I'm doing before I do that. So yes, anyone who knows about expanding the user, I'm more than happy to take advice here. I have done this before. So let's open the user. And we know we're going to have to extend. Uh, we know that we're going to have to um, add in a an Authy ID, right? So we can add a protected or private. Protected. Protected Authy ID. And 
that's going to be a... Whoa, 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 whoa. That's going to be an int. So we've got an author ID, and we need a way to set that. So then we're going to do a public function set authy ID int authy ID return void and then we're going to say what well, how did it say it in the documentation it said if the authy ID is not set if this authy ID is not equal to authy ID I mean that is just pointless right we just set the authy ID we just set the authy ID and we don't worry about anything else. It's just a setter. Because we should be calling save. We shouldn't be calling save from inside our model, I don't think. Oh, noises in my ear. Uh, thank you, Teku, for following. Welcome to the stream. I really, really appreciate that. So we're going to set the, we've got a set authy ID and we've got an authy ID as a property. That's the first thing we need to do. The next thing we need to do is to install the um the authy com uh, composer package i really hate the fact i can't flip between projects here so we want a composer require authy php i don't care about the greater than three so let's do that next let's get access to comp to the authy client library we need to be keeping an eye open for typos and stuff in these docs and if anyone wants to read the docs of Auth of twilio uh it's github.com slash authy can't remember i can't remember let's find out let's find out what this is forked from how do i see where it's forked from randomly watching streams and then recognize your voice from grumpy and the gaming podcast i think well that's very kind of you thank you Thank you, Teku. From Grumpy. I hope you mean like Chris, right? Grumpy programmer. That that would be pretty cool. Um, how do I find out where this is forked from? Is it because I don't use GitHub at all ever anymore? Does shouldn't it? Didn't it used to say here forked from whatever? Or am I forked from? Is at the top. Where? Here? Do I click on fork? Under GH Authy. Oh, yes. Fork from Twilio Authy. <laughs> PHP. Left, left, up, 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 left. Yes, you've got it. You've done it. Thank you. So, yeah, if you want to read through this and make suggestions on documentation updates as we uh, as we go, then you can find it at Twilio Authy PHP. That's good. So, we've installed that, which is all good. And then Laravel did some compulsory hook goodness at the end which is also all good so at least we have that installed i have no idea right this is annoying me switch project command alt backtick now like it used to be just command backtick why can i have it as just command backtick this is really really annoying me nothing to show huh Oh, yeah. Next project window. I want you to be command backtick, please. Thank you. Hooray! Left, left, left. Too much left. Can we control? Yeah, you can control me with the chat. Of course. It's just I don't read it very often when I'm actually doing work. So the next thing we need to figure out is how are we going to... Where are we going to trigger this... Um, where are we going to trigger this 2FA stuff? My suggestion is we don't do it at login. I'm thinking is at login, we get to this dashboard. And if they haven't enabled 2FA, then we say, um, then we say at this point, enable 2FA. And then they click a button. And if they click a button, then we ask with a form for the information to say, what's your phone number and what's your country code? And then we use that to make the API request and then handle the response from Authy and push that back into the user so it's stored. Now, we do need to add that to migrations, right? Because at the moment, we have no persistency. This is me scrapping with Laravel and trying to remember how Laravel works and why it works like that and 
should it work like no no stop me migrations create user table yep please create user table and then we want to create a new column right called integer and the column name is auth id and it should be nullable so we should be able to run these migrations now right php artisan migrate and we should have a new column nothing to migrate oh okay uh because it doesn't know that i've made any changes because i've made changes to the existing um because i made changes to the existing rollback migrate rollback yes please because i made ex changes to the existing schema that's what it is so that's fine so i need to roll back and then migrate and now we don't have a user is my guess yep so then we register the user again and cool now we have access to the um php artisan migrate fresh thank you very much fan can i just say how useful you've been today <laughs> it's nice having someone who knows about laravel in the chat so thank you very much for that i really really appreciate it i know i know why things don't work i just don't know the most efficient way to get them to work if that makes sense so i knew what the problem was there the problem is that i didn't add a new migration using php artisan migrate create or whatever migration create so laravel didn't know that i'd altered the the schema in the migration i get that i just don't know the best way to to fix that mm. another hour or so and that will be a ice cold pint of cider in a beer garden somewhere and that's a given so cool so we have the auth id stored now we want to go into our view which is not called a view in laravel it's called a it is called a view it's called a blade that's what it's called um and i believe it's home.blade.php is which is what gives us the ul logged in page so let's can i debug stuff here we have access to the we have access to the user in the blade template but let's just remind ourselves how that works here in the docs i'm sure we have access to the user in the blade template i'm well i'm not sure i'm kind of sure that we have access in the blade in the blade template blade blade where is it view to move a little views layout structure can in the base layout all these views use the bootstrap success okay Show me how I access the logged in user in the view, please. Show me. Oh, okay. Laravel access logged in user in view. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It uses a facade, right? It uses a facade. Um, can I do debug? I'm sure I can do debug in the view, right? Auth user try it and see are we are we on a try it and see moment first of the day i think but we'll go for it that looks like it may work right i don't know if debug will work i don't know if that actually exists as a as an actual command no it doesn't okay can we do var dump am i overthinking this or DD, I should say. Yeah, we can just do var dump. DD is is DD Laravel's like own version of la var dump? Is it? Is it just do a var dump and die? Oh yeah, that's cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, if you're doing enough var dumping that you need to create your own global function for it, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Whether you think that's good or bad. So can I just dump that now? You are logged in. It's null. Okay. So that looks like that's fine. So it looks like we can say here. We can use that to say if it. Whoa. 
if it's null, let's just get rid of you are logged in, right? It's obvious we're logged in. So we can then say at if uh, auth user authy id is null. If it's null, we know that we're not actually um, if it's null, we know that we're not actually using two-factor authentication, right? So we can dump a form here. Now I have no idea how we do forms in Laravel in uh, 5.8. It's been like so long. I think we just code the HTML by hand, right? And then go back and define the validation rules in the controller or in its own class, if I remember correctly. But we can figure that out. That's no problem. In fact, what we should do is we should look at the... Um, the user registration view just so we've got the um just so we've got the like markup to work to start from because that's like how super lazy i am we should just like copy the form no not card body copy the whole form into our markup so that i don't have to figure i don't have to figure out uh bloody css and all that nonsense why did that not copy everything? Uh huh. That's weird. There you go. Okay. So now we should only see that form if we're actually, if we don't have um, authentic, uh, two factor authentication enabled, which is nice. Now we just need to make the form have the information that we want. So we're out, echoing out the CSRF. And then we want to, we only really want to get two things here, right? So we want to have the country code, which is whatever. This is the, this is Laravel's um, global helper for translations, I think. But I think you can just stick anything you want in there. And if it doesn't exist as a translation, it will, um, it will just output what you passed into the function. If I talk nonsense and you know better, please shout in uh, in chat. Because a lot of this stuff is guesswork for me. And then we've got the ID, which is country code, which is a type text. Uh, error, country, code. I don't know what this is. Is, is invalid. Oh, that adds a class. This adds a class is invalid if an error exists. Yeah. So if this is basically saying if error exists country code, then echo out is invalid and then end, end error. The name is country code. The value is the old version of country code. So if if the validation fails, we can pre-fill this. Required autocomplete equals country code and focus onto that. So now we should see a form in here. I'm hoping. Cool. Um, yeah, I have my thing set up way too big. This should probably be a lot smaller if we're going to go there. Should probably be like... Yeah, that'll do. And then what I want to do is put a plus there so you can only, you only have to type in two digits. But I don't know whether we should concentrate on making this good or making it, you know, actually functional. Um, I guess somewhere in between would be good. Okay, so there's our country code. Then we've got a new form rope, which is telephone number. And the label we want is telephone, no, mobile number, I guess. Mobile number is better because we can't accept, we can't accept a landline number. Mobile number, bumba number, there we go. Yeah, I'm doing this a skanky way, I guess, but it's fine. Input ID equals mobile number. Type equals text. And then if we have an email, if we have an error for mobile number, then add the is error class. The name is mobile number and put the old mobile number in there if we fail validation. Autocomplete. What does that mean? Does that, is autocomplete? I don't know HTML very well, right? Require tells it's required. Autocomplete means it autocompletes it as a type email. Does that mean like, if you have an email stored in your browser like I did, it'll fill it in. That's kind of clever. If so, what kind of HTML autocompletes exist? 
Excuse me while I get distracted again. Because this is the way that I roll. Sorry. Start doing something and then, like, realize, oh, yeah, look at this. That's pretty awesome, actually. Is there one for phone number? Tell, I saw then. Tell country code. Yes, please. Yes, please. We'll have that. We'll have that up here. Uh, tell national. Tell area code. Tell local. A full telephone number including the country code. If you need to break the phone number up into its components, you can use these values for that field. It's pretty well supported. Even EIA. <laughs> Even I eleven has some support. See, I'm just learning stuff all the time. Um, let's just go tell national, right? That's fine. Eight five 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 six five zero two. Yeah, that's fine. Let's just go tell national here. Um, I didn't know these things existed because my HTML foo is really weak. Like I haven't worked on real HTML applications for in forever. But it's all good. I mean, I really don't want to get carried away trying to actually, um, trying to actually make this look good because I could be here for about four weeks. We don't want the password fields. Although you know, my my inner web developer, um, uh, what do we want? Not register. We want uh, add to FA. My inner web developer thinks, oh, wouldn't it be nice, though, if, um, you know, we had a little mobile icon here, which I know you can easily do in in Bootstrap. And wouldn't it be nice if we had the plus here to imply you don't need to touch the plus? All that good stuff. But, you know, let's not let's not get stuck into that. Let's add a title here, though. So before the form, we'll say uh, heading one, add to F.A. Oh, I broke everything by not... How did I break everything by just adding a H1? What did I do? Card body is there. That's fine. <gasps> oh, it's okay. Whew. Whew. Right, we get in there. So we want to capture this and then we want to post it to the root uh, add to FA. I guess which this should now error because that root doesn't exist great so then we go to roots web dot php where roots web dot php I'm correct and then we say root get uh, add do we add it under auth how auth roots let's see what the auth roots are added as I can't come and click that. This is one of the things that drives me off the wall about Laravel. Because it does this magic to um, to have the auth available in. It uses magic methods to capture the fact that auth doesn't exist and forward it to the auth facade, right? So I can find this using auth facade. Facade, which is in the auth facade, which is in the auth namespace. Hmm. PHP artisan root list. Thank you. Thank you. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's because I broke this root file, right? <laughs> and then I'm saying, can you list the roots for me? But also I've broken the root file. But don't worry. Still list the roots for me. So I just want to check where the... Because I'm just checking what, what roots are being used for the existing authentication stuff, right? So it's using register slash login slash logout. So I'm okay using add to FA essentially. I didn't know if I wanted to put it in a you know in a essentially in a directory, but I'm okay using add to FA as the root. And then we'll send it to the add to FA controller. Controller. Do I need to add index in there, or if I don't, will it just use the invoke? Uh, magic method when you be posting i will be posting i will be posting um yeah 
I don't know if I actually need to define the controller because like I'd like to just use Invoke because I'm a big proponent of single action controllers um, where possible. So we'll try that. Try it and see. Try it and see is all good. I like single action controllers. Name is add to FA. There we go. So now hopefully this will render because we have the root, even though the controller doesn't exist. Invalid root action. Okay. Oh, nice. So what it's saying is the controller doesn't exist, but it will try and use invoke. So try and see worked well there. So if we don't define the index, it'll just try and invoke it, which is superb. That's the way I love to have like single action controllers with just using invoke. Just a personal preference. Now I can do PHP artisan make controller and then let's make this bigger. I only made it smaller so that that table rendered and then the name of my controller, right? That should create the controller for me. Oh. So I needed to create the controller before I added the root, I'm guessing. So if we comment that out. Yeah, we create the controller. Then we can add the root. In fact, can I do this? Add to FA class. Can I use like the class super duper um, hyper duper duper constants in there? Because that means I don't even have any typos anymore, which is great. Big fan of these. I don't even know what they're called. What are they called? They're like the runtime constants, where at runtime this is replaced with the actual class name of this class but I, I i can't think what the name is as grim should know if he's still here what's the name of these super duper global hyper duper global class constant things so we still have a an error here invalid root action invoke doesn't exist on the root which is nice so we should be able to just easily fix that problem by adding an invoke and i guess it should return something uh, mm -hmm. uh oh I don't know still doesn't work though invalid root action invalid root action okay is that because I haven't defined one I mean it it's saying here if not method exists action invoke if not method exists action you don't have invoke defined on the controller. I thought I just did that. No. Hmm. No, 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 no. Please, please don't ever be sorry. Don't ever be sorry. I like, I would totally prefer to have suggestions than not have suggestions. Like this is, this is group fun here. So thank you so much for the follow, Antioa. Thank you very much. Welcome to the stream. Brilliant to have you. Um, I mean, we could try this out right by saying invoke will this work no invoke doesn't exist so what if we say index and then add the index oh sorry and then add in call this index does this need to be called index action or anything or is it just as it is Okay, so there's definitely a problem here. Root add to FA not defined. Oh, that's because I called the name with no spaces and I called the name with spaces. That's what the problem there is. Ass to FA. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now it works. That is kind of intriguing to me that I can't use invoke as the action. I'm going to go back to my good friend Google about that. Laravel single action controller invoke because you must be able to do that right surely single action controllers there you go if you'd like to define a controller that only handles a single action you can place a single invoke method on the controller which i thought i did that should work in my mind weird okay I'm going to get this working. This is something that will annoy me otherwise. So if we remove that and then rename index to invoke. This should work now, right? Get rid of this because it's annoying me. This should work. In my mind, this should work. Okay, all of a sudden it does work. That is so weird. And if we 
add some gubbins in here, it should get posted there, which it does. And then we have the request passed in here. Oh, can we set this up? Can we set this up as a constructor? Will will the constructor sort this out? Hmm. Let's figure that out in a minute. Request post. That should give us our posted data, right? Yeah, cool. Superb. So this is our this is our CSRF token. There's the country code, there's the mobile number. Right. Let's take a look at the documentation. Because I cannot for the life of me remember how you handle forms. Um, I know it's relatively um, straightforward. Validation. Oh, tell you the other thing I need to do with this is to enable this. This route needs to be protected with the auth um, middleware. Definitely. I can't remember how I do that. Do I do add middleware? Mid go. Oh, I don't get code completion. Damn you, Laravel. Damn you. Actually, now's the time. Now is absolutely the time. I wonder if it was because I had... Oh, I'm getting sidetracked again, but this is a good one. I wonder if it's because I had the class constant in there. I wonder if that's why it didn't work last time. Sidetrack. Yeah, it doesn't like the class constant, look. Because the class constant will return the fully qualified name if you look here right and i bet in it just wants the controller name as a string i'm betting that's what it is because if i change that then there you go add to fa yeah okay at least i understand what was happening there yeah then i want to uh, add the middleware oh thank you fatten see i kind of know what i'm doing but i i kind of don't so yeah, this is only going to work if we're logged in, right? That's perfect. So now we know that this is protected, so we don't have to hand... This middleware here will ensure that it's the logged in user, and the CSRF token that is automatically handled will effectively protect us from CSF, CSRF. So the brilliant news now is we don't need to worry about doing anything in our controller. We know that the user's logged in, and the CSRF means it's the right user, so that's good. So uh, next we need to validate stuff right we need to validate the the form that we the form that we've posted is a valid form which is nice easiest way is to use a form request class here we go creating form requests beautiful excuse me it's so freaking hot i can't wait to have a pint of cider i am so looking forward to it for more complex validation scenarios, you may wish to create a form request. Form requests are custom request classes that contain validation logic. Lovely. So we can create the request using artisan, which is nice. So we do PHP artisan make request and then the name of the request. I guess this is the correct. Yeah, this is the correct thing that we're. This directory is like this. We created when we run make request command. Lovely. Okay, so we do php artisan make request to f a request is the end of the request there is no store blog post what kind of name is that i don't get it store blog post i'm trying to figure out what the default the standard naming convention is in laravel um because like i would say this is a 2fa request an add 2fa request actually because it's specific it's specifically add in the 2FA. You may have typed in dependencies. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I guess we'll just call it add 2FA. I don't understand, but that's fine. And then that should have created it in add 2FA.php. Here we go. So, we add the validation rules here, do we? We don't need to handle any of the other stuff. I really should have read the documentation, right? 
So how validation rules are evaluated? All you need to do is type in the request on your controller method. The incoming form request is validated before the controller method is called, meaning you do not need to clutch your controller with validation logic. Nice. So then we have a store method that gets called if the validation passes. So effectively, it means our controller is going to be like empty here, right? Am I reading this correctly? We just type in this, this, uh, what was this called? A uh, form request. And then the form request does everything. So all we need to do in our controller is essentially, um, is essentially have the right uh, request type hinted. Okay. So say for our rules, we say rules. And we've got two things. I guess these are the names of the fields that we added. So we've got country underscore code. And we've got uh, mobile underscore number. And they're both required. Um, and I guess, can we say, oh yeah, I need to look at the validation rules here. I always forget what validation rules are actually um, available to you. Because there's a ton of like out of the box validation rules here, right? Uh, uh, available validation rules. I just saw it. There you go. So can we have int? Oh, that was bad. Can we have a number as a validation rule? Digits. There we go. The field under validation must be numeric and must have an exact length of value. Oh, okay. Digits between min max. Perfect. So, uh, country code numbers validation i think it can be one two or three digits i think that's like i'm not going to go full full bow here but i think it can be one two or three digits why am i looking there there's a regular expression for it which is kind of nice this is saying it can it needs to be one to nine two of them this is wrong right because this won't match yeah that's nonsense. That regular expression equals complete nonsense. Because plus one is a valid uh, list list of country code telephone. Let's just look at the list and see. Oh, look at that. Does that mean that this is 35818? Am I reading this correctly? Like, is American Samoa plus 1684? I think it is. Okay. Let's be safe and say it needs to be between 1 and 5, right? In fact, let's be safe and say it needs to be... Oh, no. Plus 44 is the actual country code for Guernsey, isn't it? It's just got these optional mobile and landline numbers that are the like area codes that are linked. So I think between one and three. I'm making the decision between one and three. The decision is made. The foot's coming down. The foot is down. Um, where was my validation? So we want digits between min and max. Between the given min and max. Does that mean like one and three? Or does it mean one and nine, nine, nine? The field under validation must have a length between the given min and max. Okay, let's try. Let's um, try it and see. Digits, colon, min, comma, max, one and three. Okay. Mobile number we won't worry about for now. So if we go back to our controller and then type in on the add to FA. Digits between. Yeah, good call. Thank you. Thank you. I suspect this is going to be one and nine, 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 but I'd like to just try it anyway. Make sure you said authorization to true, okay, as well. Authorized to true. Determine if the user is authorized to make a request. Okay, so this is saying, yeah, I'm gonna check that the user is um that the user is actually allowed to be making this request. Because you can have forms and validation where you don't care if the user's logged in or not. That makes sense. Make sure you said oh, yeah, that's fine. So hopefully now this lets us where's my there we go. So let's say if we say country code one, I would expect that to work fine. And it does because I don't have the store method. 
the store the store the store method of the request here yeah, sorry i should have read the i should have read the uh documentation correctly which i didn't store i noticed it called some some kind of store but i didn't actually read where store is so determine whether authorized we don't care about the error messages we don't care about that it's the controller method okay so essentially what happens here is if i echo okay then everything has passed otherwise it should just redirect me back and show the error yeah that's fine so now if we put country code uh five that's okay so it is between one and three but if we put country code one two three four i would expect validation to fail and it does fail that's perfect that's absolutely perfect great so where we've put okay this is what we would do when we've actually got successful validation this is what we do here this is a lot of fun you know and um, i think uh this makes life so much easier in some respects now then a telephone number what validation do we want for a telephone number uh digits between again i guess I mean, I have no idea what the actual um, real life validation for a telephone number would be. Should we say between 5 and 13? <laughs> I don't know. But that's totally fine. Now, do we want to store this in our database? I guess we don't care about storing the number in our database. Like, why do I want to actually store any more personal information than I want? We just want to proxy this through to... Um, we literally just want to proxy this through to to Authy. Yeah, I think there's no reason for us to store this in our own database. Like, I don't want to know this stuff. So, now if we put in... Now, if we put in a number between 5 and 13, we should pass validation. Otherwise, we should fail. So, 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3 should fail validation. Perfect. But one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three should pass validation, and it does. Super sweet. I love it. So now that we've successfully validated everything, we need to have our data. Now I'm interested to know if um, if it casts if the validation casts it into the integer that I want it to be. I'm guessing not. I'm guessing not, but that's totally fine. So we validated. What we want to do now is we want to have a new... I don't know how Laravel's dependency injector works, but that's all good. Now, I know it uses auto-wiring to wire stuff up. And I know that we want to do this authy creator user. So this is what we actually want to do here is... Uh, where's my authy doc? Here. So we want to... To use this client, you just need to use the Authy API and initialize it with your API key. So what we want to do is create, I want to guess, create a factory that will create the Authy API anytime I want it. I guess. I mean, let's just do this the down and dirty way and then improve, right? Because this is my API Authy. This is my way. This is the way that I roll. Oh, I hate those underscores. We need to get some pull requests on this. Um, oh, does that get put into the config? Config. Authy API key. Because we already stored that in our environment, right? So let's set that into the... Let's set that into the, into the private method here so we've got access to it. Obviously, what I want to do is dependency injection here and pass this in as a constructor argument. So I only need to create it once every request response cycle. But in the interest of not learning Laravel's service locator today, um, we'll just hack it in there for now. Um, and then, of course, it'll end up in production because that's what happens every time you hack things in and think I'll come back to it later. But that's fine. Excuse me, I'm so hot, I'm tempted to pour this iced water over my head at this point. So now we have that, we need to create a user, right? So we want to register user. That's what we want to do here. So we want to say this, Authy API. 
register user because don't forget we know full well at this point that um that the uh the form that's been filled in is valid it's validated server side and with a little bit of client side validation we added so we need the email which i'm guessing we can get from auth user email i mean this is a definite try it and see moment if ever there was one and then we want the mobile phone number so that's going to be in our request right in fact let's do this request do i get a post or does the the cool um does this cool does this actually form request does this make anything available to me that isn't um normal or do i just call post as usual does it overwrite the post values let's read the docs read the docs read the docs So, here we go. Authorizing form requests. No. Form requests. Here we go. Creating form requests. Cool. So, we do the validation, which is fine. Retrieve the validated input data. This is what we want. So, it, it's in the validated um, array. The validated method, I guess. Superb. So then we can say uh, request validated. Can we just say mobile number? I'm guessing we can. And then the uh, country code. You can literally call the fields of the request object as properties. Oh, that sounds magical. That sounds way too magical for me. See if this works like I get you. Request mobile number. I know, but isn't that like super, super magical? Like, you know, it's all, almost too much for me. So next we want the cell phone, which is mobile number. And then after that, we want the country code. And after that, we want send install link. Um, this false that. I think that means that. Oh, it's not documented. That's nice. And it's got a capital T. Oh, I need to, I need to make some pull requests to this. Ugh, my eyes. Sorry, whoever wrote that. That's not fair. That's not fair, and it's going to return an author user, which is nice. Thinking of it as just populate in a request object as as a DTO magic. <laughs> yeah, that that's exactly how I am thinking of it. I mean, the magic is strong in Laravel anyway, right? And I just try not to use it where I can. I mean. Really, what I'd rather be doing here is passing in the user as like a constructor argument, if possible, or even in here. Can I do that? Can I pass it in here? And then instead of having to do this, do like, does that work? Because if that works, then I much prefer to do that than to use the, um, to even use the, the facade. But you can use auth user. Oh, but that's still global. But that's still global access, right? That still means that if I want to mock the user in my tests, I'm in a world of hurt. I know there's methods of mocking facades. I know there's methods of adding um, mocked responses to when you invoke facades. I've done so much testing in Laravel in the last job I was in. Um, Felix and Asgrim will attest to that. But I just pref would much prefer if I can just do this. Are you sure this doesn't work? Can we just can we try that and see? Because that looks kind of interesting to me. Let's see if like this is what we're gonna need, right? Email equals Dolly. In fact, let's let's go a step. Whoa, let's go a step further than that and let's see what user is when it gets passed in, right? Not that I not that I'm disbelieving you. Um class author app not found. That's good. It's not what I was expecting, but it's good. I mean it should right, okay, we don't need that for a second. Let's let's solve one problem at a time. Yeah, see we do get a user. We definitely do get a user sent in. Uh 
a null user. <laughs> oh, because because the the magic wiring, the auto wiring in the service locator in the container essentially goes. Oh yeah, I know what a user is. I can create you a user, and so it just creates you an empty user and passes it in rather than getting the pre-configured authenticated user. I understand what's happening there. That's cool. That's cool. So now you said we can do auth email instead, right? Which we don't get. There's no such property as email. That's all I need to figure out is how I find the user's email from there. Auth user. Email. I don't even... Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. It makes sense what's happening here, to be honest. <laughs> It's predictable, and predictability is half the battle for me. Predictability is completely half the battle. And I know why it creates an empty user if you pass it in. And it makes sense why it creates an empty user if you pass it in. And so for me, that's like totally fine. It's totally fine. It's asking, it's essentially looking in the service locator and going, oh, I don't have a user object. Let me just create an empty one and return it to you. And that's cool. Now we need to figure out why this bit isn't working. So now we have another error, which is class auth the API not found. So let's take a look at the docs for auth the API. Excuse me. <clears throat> New, it's be for some reason there's like all sorts of old ways in here. It should be auth the API. Okay, cool. That's better. So now that bit should work. Oh no, I don't need to refresh my... <laughs> this is such F5 driven development, right? I should be writing tests and doing all that good stuff, but it is what it is. It is what it is. So we've created a new auth API. Now we should be able to like create the new user by saying like email here. And I know that my friends, Marco, and my friend, James Asgrim, will shout at me for these single use variables saying ah you can just paste that straight in here but doesn't that isn't that much more readable isn't it like this is where the three variables i'm going to need are coming from and this is where i'm going to pass them off to the third party isn't that like a ton more readable <laughs> you missed all the good stuff cld like i literally have been it took me 37 minutes to get my my sequel up and running so you haven't actually missed a lot of coding um but it's all good. What's up, Chef Brent? How are you doing? Welcome back to the stream, Chef Brent. Welcome back to the screen, stream, CLW. Um, yeah. Now, we need to figure out what happens when we do this, right? So, we get a user back. And then what we want to do is persist that user. So, we've got this OK method. So if the user comes back as okay, then we want to add the ID to the, we want to add the ID of the author user into the author ID of the Laravel user and save. Does that sound right? I think it does to me. Chef Brent is threatening to go live in about 30 minutes. Um, yeah, I hope it's true this time, Brenty. I'm sure it will be. It'll be fine. I'll I'll hang around for 10 minutes, but I'm definitely going to sit outside a pub and drink cider after this uh, stream. That's that's a given. Sorry. It's so hot here. Like, it's 28, 29 degrees outside and about 33 in my office now. So, whew. So, yeah, cool. So, what we want to do is we want to call a user object. And if the user, okay, is correct, access the ID and stick it in our database. So, that's great. So response because this isn't a user right this is a response from the api and then we say if response okay so the response has come back okay yep that looks good how do i get access to the user we say auth user set remem no why can't i oh is it it doesn't have any code completion 
But the user object, I added a new method to. This is interesting. I added set authy ID, which I guess I don't need to do because I can just access this authy ID, right? In fact, this should be. This should definitely be um, matching the database field, right? The attributes that are mass assignable, okay. This should match the date. I'm pretty sure this needs to match the database field name, but I'm not 100% on that. Auth user update. And then the array is... Thank you again, Fatten. You're fast in line for a t-shirt, you know. Auth user update. And then auth ID on array, where auth ID equals response ID. How does that look? That looks okay to me. If the response is okay, then set the... You can also use request user if it feels... No, no, that's okay. That's okay. I'm, so for me, it's just... All, all it's about for me, and this is from like many years of working with third-party code bases and um, understanding exactly why code bases become so unwieldy is as long as if you're going to use the global auth um function right if that's what you're going to use then just use it all over your code base so don't use auth here and then use like the facade here to access it and then in another place like pull it out of the container like just just make sure you're consistent in your access like it's really nice that Laravel gives you the facade and a global method, but it doesn't really need to give you both, is my point. Because like you said, you could use you could use request user. We could do then, okay, then request user do something. Like, just, uh, for me, it's just like, pick a way to access it and just use that everywhere. Because otherwise you'll end up thinking, oh, why am I using a facade here? Was there a reason, like in six months time? it And that is what ends up really, really like hurting your code base. Auth user, request user, request user, auth user. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it, it. I don't know. I don't. I salute the goals of Laravel, right? I know that Taylor and the team are trying to make it as easy and usable as possible for you to do like rapid application development. I get that. But I don't understand, for example, why there's four ways to access the user. Like, just do one way or two ways if one of them is really simple and you need to do a second way if you want to do something a lot more complicated for me that kind of solves a lot of problems with the, the maintainability that i've seen in large laravel code bases and that's not all laravel large laravel code bases please don't think i'm saying everyone who's done a large project in laravel makes it unmaintainable totally not true but I've seen it and I've been paid as a consultant to go in and fix them and they can get monstrous. So I think I can just give a root name here, right? So if I put home there, this should work. So if the response is okay, update our user with the ID and then redirect to home. Otherwise, throw new exception. I don't know what exception I want to throw. So we'll throw a... Uh, let's not do a hit. Let's not do an invalid argument exception, which is my normal problem. Authentication exception, I'll do. And the exception name should be users errors as field. Oh, it's gonna be, it can be an array of errors. Uh, implode. Implode the array of errors which we access using response errors response errors and we'll implode them with uh just like that so we've got a message throw unhandled illuminate what do you mean i'm throwing it that's fine okay so if this works it should update the database and then take us back to the home page and if it doesn't work it should throw an exception and give us a message as to why that exception was thrown if i've understood what's going on here correctly um now we're going to actually hit authy's api is there any way that i can tell authy that this is like 
debugging stuff? Or do I just end up registering a load of users and worrying about it later? Um, hmm. I mean, I guess I can delete all these users, right? So that I haven't got a billion different users in my system that don't really exist. Um, this feels like a try it and see moment. But then on the other hand, it feels like, a, hmm, do I want to do this moment? So I guess we'll just do it while I'm, before I think too much. There we go. So we had an error. <clears throat> We had an error, invalid argument passed into implode. Oh, okay, that's not what I was expecting. The glue, which is a string. Yeah, that looks okay. Implode. Implode, which takes glue, which is a string. Expected array got string, oh. No, it should take the glue first and then the array second, right? And errors returns an array. Oh, it returns a standard class object. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I kind of should have, could have, would have fixed that previously. So I'm expecting an exception. I didn't get an exception. It redirected me. Weird. Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. It's not throwing an exception, but it's also not. Um. Oh, okay. Is it because I changed the? Oh, that isn't no well. Okay, let's dump the user here. Let's dump the user object. Uh, and once again, look what I'm doing here. Is I'm... Auth... User. What I'm doing here is I'm, like, totally not listening to my own advice and accessing it using the facade. So let's make sure we are consistent here. So let's dump what the user looks like so we can see if it's been added, essentially. It hasn't been, yeah, ha ha, ha ha ha, I agree. I agree, ha ha. Um, I'd like to just get this bit done and then knock off the stream, to be honest, but I'm 100% not sure how I add an extra field to this model and persist it. I just don't feel like I've done this correctly. Because it's not giving me any errors. Do I need to save? Update does the save for me, right? Let's let's check the let's check the model. Um, oh, hello. Let's check the documentation for the models and figure this out. Because it's not persisting it, right? That's that's for sure. And I'm not a hundred percent on how I work with the user model. Did you name the root? I did name the root. Yes. I did name the root. I named it add to FA. Uh, eloquent ORM. So how do we how do we add fields to this? Do we just add the fields as I have? Protected attributes, the model's default values for attributes. So this is saying if you have a delayed attribute, set the default value to false, right? Did you add the field in the migration? I think I did. Welcome to the stream, DQ Kev. Um, yes, I believe I did do that. I believe I remembered to do that. Uh, the question is, where do I find the migration, right? Migrations. It should be in my recent fields if I did do that, though. You're correct. Yeah, I did, I think. Auth ID. There we go. And I ran the... I didn't add it to the fillable property. The fillable property only counts for mass assignment, which assigning 
like this counts as mass assignment, does it? Is that the problem? And wouldn't it throw an exception if that was the problem? Does this need to be public, by the way? Auth ID is not equal to authy ID. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that old chestnut. That's what you get for working with strings. Like, I totally shouldn't be working with strings here. I should be passing in property names. Mm. Yeah. Good spot, though, DQ Kev. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see what happens here, then. Okay, so we're still successfully returning it from... So you're still null, though. You're still null. I would expect an error, though, if um, fillable... If fillable is... Okay, so... If this property exists, right? And if it's not infillable, and if I try and access it via mass assignment, and it's not infillable, I've seen it happen before. Laravel throws uh, an exception and says, ah, oh, you can't access this... Uh, property via mass assignment because it's not in the fillable array, right? That's that's what happens. I've definitely seen it. This is useless because I'm not using that. I'm just using Laravel's default model stuff here. Don't define the property. It's a database column. Oh, so I don't need to define it here? Take that out, do you say? Okay, and do I need to run anything now? Is everything cached or can I just check if this works again? So now you think that it may ra throw an exception because it's not mass assignable, right? That could totally happen now, which I'd be happy with. But it doesn't. Hmm. And it's still no. Ugh! It's in my database, right? There's my migration. There's the column, author ID. It's nullable, which it should be, because it's not necessarily... Yeah, but if that was happening, I'd expect to see an exception. Is the response coming from the API? I tell you what we should definitely do is dump the response from... Because I'm assuming something... I'm assuming this is being hit. Because if it wasn't being hit, I would accept this. expect this exception to be being thrown and caught. But you're right. I have no idea if that's what's happening. So, yes, good point. Let's check what the response from Authy is. It's a very, very valid point there. Invalid API key. Okay. So why isn't that throwing an exception, though? So is okay at this point should be false. Let's work through this. It is false. So if response, okay, so this isn't it. Which is great because it means it's not a problem with our models and our database, etc., etc. And this is hit. This is what some old school debugging here. I should just be step debugging, but hey, it is hit. Okay. So the error isn't getting thrown. The error isn't getting caught. There we go. I guess it's because I was using some kind of custom. Um, I guess it's because I was using some kind of custom exception that Laravel uses under the hood and suppresses. Obviously, those exceptions are caught and suppressed for some reason. Possibly because they could like reveal um, like private or secret information if the exception is bubbled up to the to the stack trace. Makes sense to me, and I'm sticking to it. So let's just use a good old-fashioned exception, and that's fine. So we got an invalid API key. That's fine. Uh, we should, like, we should have that in our um, config, right? I'm just going to debug them because it's already been on stream once, so who cares? Oh, I see. So I just added it as... The M file does not go into the um, into the config then, right? Is that the case? Am I dot M? 
This stuff doesn't go into the config. Or does it go as authy.api.key? There's some kind of um some kind of way that it if it's env then env. Thank you. That makes perfect sense, right? For some reason I thought that the configs were merged at runtime. Um obviously they're not. <laughs> but for some reason I for some I just thought that there what it was. User was not valid. Okay. Now that's totally more expectant more what I would expect. Um, I wonder if there's any like debugging in the dashboard that allows me to see why the user was not valid because I seem to remember seem to think that there was um, I seem to think that you could like check All right. why didn't I read this earlier this will take three minutes and saves over two hours of work Ugh. jeez I mean, I guess we should. To create a new... The, I, mean, I mean, we should have done this, like, first as last. If only I'd have gone back to this. We need to create the user's email and the cell phone. And then we say, blah, that's fine. So then we say, enable two-factor authentication. Can I put anything in here or will it just... Is this because it's not a valid phone number, do you think? Oh, no, the user's been added now. So that should be in my dashboard, right? Yeah. Okay. So this should work in my mind. So if this response doesn't work, let's just debug dump the response in case it gives us more information like we're only using the message and it may give us like a ton more information if we cell phone is invalid ah, okay why did that not implode though didn't we implode them what's going on there i guess i just flukily picked the correct cell phone oh okay cell phone is invalid what it is yeah okay can you see what's happening here is that cell phone is the key cell phone is the key and is invalid is the message so let's just like for each response errors because we can't implode it now as error uh, as key message we need to make this error readable because we're going to be wrestling with this forever. Dollar error equals key dot message. No space first. So we just want to make this readable in the exception message. Key dot message dot that cool so now we should have a readable error message user was not valid oh <laughs> error dot equals i'm just overriding it otherwise right basics there we are cell phone is invalid message user was not valid cool we can read that that works that works so we know the cell phone was invalid there that's fine so let's try again Country code, I'm going to just like add my real cell phone number here. Not hit. Okay, so this got hit. That actually worked. So now if we go back to home, we may have persistence here, or we may not. Oh, it's still no. It's still no. Oh, okay. So I would expect to see this user in the console. That's the first thing I would expect. You did DD before update. Oh, did I? <laughs> yeah, that's going to do it, isn't it? Now I wonder what happens if I resubmit that form. Like, is it just going to go? Okay, if I resubmit the form. So 
So I'm resubmitting. I'm checking the response. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I want to check that it does send me an ID if it exists already. I'm hoping it does, but you never know. Because I'm actually doing a, a, a put. So... It gives me okay and it gives me an ID, yeah? So we definitely get an ID. That's the other thing to check, right? Is... We definitely get an ID, right? One, five, three, seven, five, four, seven, eight, two. Cool. It's a property, not a function. I don't know what. Yeah, it's a function. The doc said that it was a function. Uh, I'm sure they did. Yeah. The doc said that ID is a function. Yeah, I know. I know that's confusing. So the ID is definitely okay there, right? And then if we look at the user that we've created, then can I see the properties here? Attributes, right? The auth ID is still null here. Yeah. So after I do my update on the user, the user's auth ID is still null. It was a public property on the response. Ah, it's okay. This is definitely working, right? In fact, let's do this. Let's do this. Because I'd love to just get this bit working and then go to the pub. That's like my current plan. Refactor to a variable. So let's say ID equals and then check that ID is an I is a valid ID at this point. So we're confirming that the ID is a valid ID. Then we do the user update. And I don't need to do a save here or anything, right? I mean, it's not even being set because I'll see it here. And then redirect. But with debug dumping. So this is the int, right? That's the first debug dump. So that is definitely an integer. So I'm pretty happy with that at that point. Then we do the auth user update and we set the auth ID, which definitely exists in the database, to the ID. Please try ID without. But ID is definitely set to be an integer at this point on line 31. If you look here, line 31 is debug dumping it and it's, definitely an integer at that point yeah 100 percent. i mean i could do it totally do it but i'm there we are no id uh exists it's a, it's a function so we've got the id as the id no 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 no. don't be sorry don't ever be sorry please seriously dq kev you've been really helpful and i i'm totally just trying to work through this in my mind and if i sounded like grumpy it's because i'm boiling hot not because of your interaction genuinely please always 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 give suggestions that's a good suggestion in my mind i'm just trying to think and and speak through what my thought process is so there's value here so in my mind what's happening is this isn't getting set right is does everyone agree with that can i do this like this won't persist it right but does it at least set the Auth ID. Attributes. 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 Something like that. Uh, attributes. Yeah, that's set. Now can I do a save? Yeah, okay. That's weird that the update wasn't... Well, I mean, this may not work either. But at least it's set in it now, right? Okay, so... It's done something. Where was attributes? Is this still... Yeah, now it's got an auth ID. Okay. So now if we remove that debug dump, this should redirect us to home and remove the 2FA. Oh! Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, but it's there. It's fine. It is there. It's just not hiding the form. I have an error in my blade template. I agree. Which is great, which is the greatest thing, because all I've done is persist the auth ID today. But I'm pretty happy with that. So let's take a look at the blade template. Uh, let's get rid of the var dump. So we say saying here, if is now auth user authy ID. There you go. 
Whew. It's worked. It's actually worked. Now then, that was a that was a tricky one. We're getting there. So this is kind of the easiest part, and it's taken two hours to get this far. Um, possibly we should go through the um go through this to save yourself two hours documentation <laughs> to next week before. Um we'll we'll kick on with this again on Monday. Um I'm thinking we'll do two till four again. That seems like a better piece of time. Thank you so much for all the the help. Like Laravel, I've done so much work with Laravel, but literally I've only done work with Laravel writing unit tests for it. So I have no idea what I'm doing. Dragon Man Tank, so little, so late. How are you doing? I just at the beginning of the stream said some nice things about you. So I'm um I, I'm I'm hoping that you don't go back and watch the VOD, Chris. But yes, I'm gonna go and drink cider outside a pub, that's for sure. It's so hot here. Um all lies, I'm sure. Yeah, they were nice things, so they are lies. But we'll come back Monday. I'd really like to now figure out how... So what we need to do next is we need to figure out when I log out. Because at the moment, we've got the Authy token, but like I can still just log in without being asked for 2FA. So that's what we definitely need to do on Monday. Um, I think we'll probably do four between 4 and 2 again. It, was, it seems like a good time. But thanks again for watching, and uh, drop me a follow if you don't already. I really appreciate that. But I'm out. Have a great weekend.